Hey, welcome back guys. A while back you may remember when I made my Pagoda build video and whenever I made that one Pagoda antenna, I also made four more to go along with it for a total of five. I've been flying these five antennas for about a month now and the reason it's taken me so long to make this review video is because whenever I'm looking for a good all-around antenna, I'm not just looking for performance but also price and durability. I can say right off the bat, as far as price and durability, these antennas won for me. Uh, compared to all other antennas and I'm going to talk more about that later in this video so right now let's just talk about performance so this flight footage I'm using the uh, immersion RC 5.8 gigahertz antenna on both my uh, video receiver and the multi-rotor both I am using the true D diversity receiver mod module in my fat shark goggles but I'm not using a second antenna just to uh, keep the test fair even with this test it was really hard to find a clear winner because it's not like testing different Fat Shark modules where you can have two Fat Shark goggles both recording from the DVR side by side. and it, Because doing it this way with two different Fat Shark goggles having one antenna on one, one antenna on the other, it's not still going to be an accurate test. Yep, I crashed right here. And now I'm putting the Pagoda antenna on. I'm going to run the same course. But what I was saying is, I didn't want to have one antenna on one pair of goggles, one antenna on the other, because on the multi-rotor, you're going to have one of the two antennas. So it, the only way to really run this test is to try to run uh, the same path in the same pattern and everything. So from these video clips I'm showing you, uh, just form your own opinion. Uh, I will say right here where I did crash with the immersion RC antenna, I did not with the Pagoda antenna, but that's because I pulled up and went over the trees. So that's still not a fair comparison, but j just do your best, compare the video uh, as I'm flying through the trees. Now I have the immersion RC antenna uh, back on the multi rotor, and after this I'm going to fly the same path with the Pagoda antenna. Uh, make it, Form your own opinions on this, but in my personal opinion, I think that there was very little difference. If I had to pick a winner, I would say the Pagoda antennas win. And I crash right about here. And now we've got the Pagoda antenna on, running the same path. Uh, but like I was saying, I think there's very little difference. And that's just as far as the immersion RC antennas. I, the only reason I picked these antennas for the comparison is because I know they are great performing antennas and a lot of guys use them. These are probably one of the most common antennas used. And this is just a short little snippet of video clips that I'm giving you guys. I've been trying to compare these all month long, uh, trying to pick a clear winner. But I do feel more confident saying that the Pagodas slightly win because Joshua Bardwell has also made a video where he tested like six to eight different antennas and he agrees the Pagodas slightly edge out on all the others as well. With that said, I don't think that these antennas are slightly better than all other antennas. I I love these a lot more than all other antennas because you still have to factor in price and durability and that's where these antennas really shine. So moving into price and durability, um, like I said, I started off with five antennas that I made about a month ago and I'm still on the original five antennas. I made four for my multi-rotors, one without a cover for my receiver on my Fat Shark goggles. Obviously this one doesn't get damaged because it just stays on my goggles. Out of these four, the most damage that I have had is on, a, on one of these, I think a propeller must have caught the cover because it broke the cover and ripped it off. But the PCB, which is these things, were untouched. So I just put a new cover on. It was this one. Put a new cover on and it's good as new. The second most damaged antenna is going to be this one. You can see where the bottom PCB is. It, something must have hit this really hard because it's kind of slanted at an angle. I could cut the cover off carefully and replace the cover and bend the bottom PCB straight again. Uh, but I really don't see a reason to because the antenna still performs great. And just to compare this to the immersion antennas, you know, just for this example, I do like how they offer replacement covers, the top cover because these do get broken off often and uh, you can just pop one of these new ones back on. The problem I have with these is if the bottom portion gets damaged, which we have right here, you can't put a new cover on. I mean, I guess you could. You could glue this on because it's not going to snap in place anymore, but the thing is once these the wires get bent, 
this antenna will never perform as well as it did ever again. So this antenna is now trash. Where, like I said, I've had these covers come off, well, I had one come off, and these PCBs don't bend like that wire does, so it's untouched. Put a new cover on, and it's going to perform just as good as it did, brand new. Now how much does everything cost? This is this is what made me stop making my own antennas. I mean, you guys know, I I was really deep into making my own antennas because they performed better than any antenna I've ever bought from a store. But the durability was extremely low. On a scale of one to ten, I would give them a zero because two to three crashes, they're done. You have to remake them. That's why I would make like ten at a time, and that would last me like a day. The antennas that I've been using come from farview.com. You can buy the antennas pre-made for $15 each. You can even choose if you want SMA or RP SMA connectors in straight or 90 degree. And then for an extra $2, you can have the antenna cover. So we are up to a total of $17. Now it doesn't sound that cheap, but keep in mind if you compare these to other $17 to $20 antennas, or even $25 antennas, these are more durable than any other antenna I've ever used. Not only that, but the performance is better than any antenna I've ever used. So even if these were 50 cents cheaper than any other antenna, I would still use these. But it gets even cheaper than that. After I did a build video using their kit, which is this right here, many of you guys let me know that other companies like ReadyMade RC sells Pagoda style antennas as well. So they have the Raptor for $13. It, it's a complete antenna with the cover and everything. But it gets even cheaper than that. Uh, like I said, they make these kits. It comes with the three PCBs, the coax, and the SMA connector, and you can pick and choose what connector you want. SMA, RP, SMA, straight, 90 degree. Uh, customize it to however you want, and it's eight bucks. And then another $2 for the cover. So now we have a $10 antenna that is more durable than any other antenna and performs better. I'm going to leave you a link to my build video in the description as well as uh, links to all this stuff. Just check out the description, you'll find everything you need. And if you plan on building a lot of antennas, and this is actually what uh, I've been doing, you can buy the PCBs by themselves for 5 bucks each. And what I did was buy the, uh, the RG402 type uh, SMA connector off of Amazon and pack of 10 and these are reusable once the antenna is done you can desolder this from the coax and place it on a new coax I also went with a 10 foot roll of RG402 for 18 bucks so we have $30 in material that does sound a lot more expensive but like I said the SMA connectors are reusable and 10 foot of coax will make 33 antennas worth of, uh, well, of antennas so if you only plan on you know having two to five of these antennas I think the kit would be the cheapest option if you plan on making a lot more than that then buying the PCBs with your own connectors and coax would be the cheaper way you also need an assembly jig if you buy three of these kits or more then you get the jig for free and uh, you only need one it's reusable assuming you never break it as far as the covers I think two dollars is is cheap enough I mean you're talking about a $10 antenna that's gonna last you a very long time but you can actually 3d print these yourselves and that's one more thing why I like this company uh, a lot of companies they want to try to make as much money as they possibly can so they're not going to share their 3d printed files where you can find the file right here just click here download it if you have a 3d printer you can make your own covers for I don't know it probably cost five cents worth of material to do it yourself. I don't own a 3D printer, but if you watch any of my repair series of videos, uh, everything that I repair that's been fried actually comes from a friend of mine, and he does 3D printing. So I repair his parts in exchange for, you know, whatever I want 3D printed. So we have a type of bartering system going on. So maybe you have a friend and you can work something out with them. So what are my overall thoughts? Um, like I said, I, I stopped making my own homemade antennas. Uh, they were more cost efficient compared to, say, like the Immersion RC or any other store-bought antenna. Uh, they didn't last as long, but they were more cost efficient. But now with the Pagoda antennas round, I, I honestly think that that 
is more cost efficient and time efficient. Not only that, but you're getting the best of performance. So it's win, win, win. And that's gonna do it for my thoughts. Um, like I said, look in the description for everything you need. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.